Today in this podcast I'm talking to Grace and Aaron for Who in the Band When Rivers Meet. Hello and thank you for doing the podcast. Our oh, pleasure. thank you. Thank, thank you, you for having us. us. Yeah. Can you explain your musical background? So, yeah, you go first. So my musical background, it kind of, first influences were sort of more soul. Um, so like Dusty Springfield and like Randy Crawford and soul singers. Um, and then like I went through like a little country phase, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. And then when I met Aaron actually, then I went into like classic rock phase yeah. and blues. I and introduced her to rock you, and blues. You did both. Yeah. So, and that's kind of where, so it's kind of a mixture of like, I because I play um, violin mandolin. And so that's kind of the country influences for me in the, the violin for sure. But equally, my favourite probably now is classic rock, you know, yeah, with Paul sure. Rogers and Free. So that's where I'm from, really. So I, I was heavily influenced by my parents. Uh, my dad was into all 60s music and Elvis was his... And still biggest, is. Uh, still is, yeah, totally, yeah. <laughs> uh, Elvis was his biggest sort of... Idol. Idol, really? yeah, totally, yeah. yeah. I'm named after Elvis, funny enough. <laughs> my yeah, middle exactly, name, yeah. yeah. Oh, his middle name, sorry. Uh, and my mum loved the Beatles and stuff like that. So that's kind of where my background came from into rock and roll, went into rock music. So my favourite band is uh, Guns N' Roses. And I just love everything about that sort of the rock genre, classic rock. So they got me into like Led Zeppelin and um, Bad Company and Free and yeah so yeah we kind of like mixed a little bit didn't we like yeah, i put you totally. into a bit more country yeah, and yeah. definitely influenced me on rock so and my very first ever cd that i ever got was johnny hooker because yeah. i heard that riff from johnny hooker that boom 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 and his voice and the riff and oh, i just loved yeah. you know, i just love the blues and i love rock how would you describe the band's music so it's generally we kind of think of it as um blues and rock yeah. But I think because we've got the mandolin and violin, it's it definitely leans into Americana as well because it just sort of gives a different yeah. flavour because you don't normally have those instruments in blues and rock. So I think that's what gives it a slightly different flavour. Yeah, so totally. Yeah. Bluesy, rocky, Americana, a little yeah. bit of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Battleground is the first single from your debut album, We Fly Free. Can you explain the song? The whole album really is about what people go through and like feelings and things like that. And Battleground is very much a case of what's happening this year. And to me, it's nothing to do with that. We have this a lot because <laughs> Aaron does the lyrics. So, and then, you know, I'll, I'll be singing them and, I'll, and it'll be like, oh, this is what it means. And I'm yeah. like, to me, it's something completely different. And yeah. I think in a way, that's what I like about our lyrics is yeah. that you can take your own perspective. Absolutely. On. I mean, I, I always, when we, when we write the songs, it's always a case of we want to have two or three different meanings and you know so there's like double meanings in a lot of the songs and things like that uh, but also the fact that people can then Inter take interpret yeah. their own uh life into the songs and, and think oh yeah you know so he's I, I could waffle on for years talking about it <laughs> <laughs> did i break the law are you trying to break the law in this song I, would, oh, yeah. well, I don't know about breaking law, but maybe um, break the rules. <laughs> yeah, there's an army, there's an army speech yeah. that we love, and he says, "Don't break the law, break the rules." Yeah, but don't break the law. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're just trying to, we just, we just want to um, put our own sort of stamp onto like the music as such, and like breaking the rules. Like, for instance, bringing the mandolin and, and the fiddle into Rocky Blues music is pretty much unheard of to a certain extent yeah. isn't it? or not for a long time at least and even because so. we were we, when we've been gigging we were gigging as a duo and we were told yeah. you know by people you can't do like rock and blues as a duo no it doesn't work you can't like, do it. exactly yeah so, <laughs> so that's us breaking the rules yeah take me to the river is one of two songs that aaron takes the lead can you explain why it was never planned as such that, that i would take song, yeah. yeah take certain songs or anything like that it was just literally a case of what's best for the song. So, um, for instance, me singing the, those two songs, uh, that was best for the song, uh, or those songs particularly. And it's the same with the harmonies and things like that. Some songs have a lot of harmonies on and others not so much. And again, it's just whatever's, whatever makes the song sound yeah, the best and for us. Definitely yeah, we like to, we sing what's best for our voices, you know, yeah, if that totally. song so it didn't feel right for me, but and then when Aaron started singing it, it definitely clicked. Yeah. And even just like what key it's in, it's you see how it sits in your voice. And yeah. So yeah, it's always like you say, what's best for the song really. Yeah. Would you say there's any softer songs on the album? Yeah, I would say that um, Bury My Body is probably the, the softest song on there. Uh, again, 
different meanings to that song. Um, and I Will Fight as well it kind of is... It's very soft. It's kind of soft that builds, softer. that builds and comes back down. And Probably a um, friend of mine as well. friend of mine is, yeah. yeah, as well. And we did... Even we wanted the album to be like mostly rocky and intense, but yeah. then at the same time we were aware that like you do need a break when listening. So yeah, we, totally. we sort of wanted to put in a couple of slower ones. And plus, um, people, so a lot of people's favourite song of ours is "Tomorrow" off of our first EP, yeah. which is a ballad. So we wanted to make sure we had a couple of soft elements yeah. in the album. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that this album is a progression from your two EPs? I think so, yeah. yeah. We definitely wanted to um, break the walls a bit more <laughs> with the album. But we could have gone in and done things exactly the same as the EPs. And it, they, they're a little bit more sparse, a little bit less experimental with sounds. Yeah. Um, and we didn't have as much organ. And, and now we've also got proper Hammond organ yeah. on this album. Yeah, and so piano as well. We did, we did want it to progress and we wanted it to feel like it was written as a whole and recorded as a whole album rather yeah. than just putting songs in an order. Yeah, we, we wanted to, for, the, for the album to be a journey rather than just like a compilation of songs just all stuck on Not there. And just, yeah, so a, it, the, the album is definitely a journey. It was a bit of a roller coaster in places for sure. What do you think your fans would think of the album compared to the EPs? Well, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> they will love a it. We <laughs> were yeah. a bit worried because. When we were in the recording process, uh, as we're playing the songs through and recording them and everything like that, it was like, oh, yeah, that's yeah, great, because you're in the moment. And then afterwards, when you're mixing, you think, oh, hope they're going to like it, because it's a little bit heavier than the EPs. But then that's, that's the progression, I think, uh, from the EPs into the album. And, so hopefully they will and love then it. It's, it's all it's awkward because when we're recording we want it to be we yeah. always go but if we love it that's that's the marker you know we've got to love every song and so we sort of feel we sort of hope that if we love it there'll be other people out there that will too so that's kind of our gauge so yeah. we're just then crossing our fingers on top of that yeah that's, and that's the way we songwrite it's a case of uh when we when we're actually songwriting we don't we're not prolific songwriters as such what we do is we have a kind of different technique where if we're writing a song and then we love it, we carry on. But if, if no, one of us isn't feeling it or another of us is feeling it, we just scrap it and move on to the we're next on. one. We're a bit, yeah. a bit, uh, a bit ruthless. ruthless like that, yeah. yeah. Green Man was from the Uprising EP. It's a very blue song. What was the inspiration behind it? Um, well, basically, uh, we, we love the blues and we love rock. And we wanted something with, a, what we love is a, is a good riff, a good heavy riff. Um, Dragon kill it and kill the vocals, and basically that that that's what came. We always Man, yeah. our motto is kind of like keep it simple, stupid. With yeah. our songwriting, yeah, we totally. don't like it to be too complex. We no. like, like Aaron said, like a good heavy riff yeah. and a good beat, and that song's the prime example of and, that. Really. And and that comes from the influence of the blues, uh, like the early blues stuff, because it's simple it's stuff, but it's it's, it's soulful, yeah. you know, and that's that's yeah. what we love. Once your love from Innocence of You VP has a rocky feel to it. Would you agree? Oh Definitely. yeah, totally. Yeah. That was probably one of yeah. the rockier ones at yeah. on that EP. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. How are you coping with lockdown and not being able to talk? It's been it's been pretty tough. Yeah. I mean, the first um the first part of lockdown we were supposed to be doing our kind of our biggest tour yet all over yeah. the country right up to Scotland. And yeah. so it's been it's been gutting for everyone, as it we've all missed out on stuff. We we've just kind of tried to focus on the online like we're, we're doing what we can so we're just trying to adapt and not think too much about when we yeah. can gig because it, it's just too upsetting we're just yeah. taking it day by day really i think you've been doing some live streaming on facebook every saturday how's that been going well it's been going really well i mean when we first done it i think it was like the second week into lockdown and we were like, we didn't know what we were going to do or like with the tour and stuff like that because obviously we lost all our gigs. So we thought, well, let's do a live stream. And we'd done it and it was really weird. It was really weird to start with. And then we was like, well, if people enjoy it, you know, do you want us to do another one? And we had a lot of people saying, yeah, yeah, do another one. So we, and that's how it went and it just kept rolling. And now and it's rolling. like, we just do it without question, really. Yeah. It's just well, gig, it keeps you know? our sanity because we've got a gig every Saturday, yeah. night, which is amazing. Yeah. Can musicians gain popularity by social media and streaming, or do they have to get a base by performing live? 
Um, I think probably um, using the two is the best strategy now because, I mean, as much as we're all about live, that's kind of like what we live for, like yeah. the, the actual gigging. But then using the tools online, I mean, you know, we've had over a third of a million views on our live streams wow. and we would never have reached that many people no. doing what we'd planned on the tour. So I think yeah. you can never replace live shows, but, um, but it's definitely helpful to spread the word for sure. For sure yeah. Yeah. What would you say is your favourite cover song you play live? Probably, uh, there's two I think, there's, there's Wayside which is a beautiful song and we cover that and um, by Tyler yeah. Bryant and The Shakedown and we saw him supporting Guns N' Roses when we heard that song it was like oh my god that's such an <laughs> yeah. amazing song, we got to do it. So we've done that one and Preaching Blues because it's just, it's a really old classic blues song we've kind of rocked it up a bit and you know we just love doing it and when we've played it out people are like jumping up and down with it and stuff so it's great yeah it's good fun i know you mentioned this earlier but how do you approach the songwriting process so it tends to be um i tend to do the music and aaron does the lyrics yeah. and so it can start with either one of us really it might be that i've got a riff or an a lyric and a melody line in my head and then aaron will take it we have to we have to kind of do our work separately <laughs> yeah. otherwise we just argue <laughs> so aaron will go away and sort of like get lost and write loads and loads of lyrics and then we pull them out pull it all together and then we kind of critique each other and work as a team at the end <laughs> because it never worked any other way did it no no so and, and when, when i'm doing lyrics i have to be uh, like in a different world kind of thing i can't have any distractions yeah. otherwise i can't so i just have get to shut out, up you know, basically yeah. is what it means <laughs> yeah. i have to go in a different room basically <laughs> <shut it all. laughs> can you tell me about one road records so yeah. um, we're independent, so we, we um, all our music is released under our own label, which is called One Road Records because we live in a little like, fishing town in um, North Essex and it only has one road to it. Yeah. So, um, you, you know, if that road's blocked, that you have to walk across fields or get a boat. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. um, so hence, it's just One Road Records. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That was our and, and the up. actual logo is our is our dog, isn't it? The yeah. whippet. Yeah. He's a whippet, and he's just. So like, we done yeah. a picture and like it's a little silhouette of. Our, oh, that's of our actually dog. him. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do a quick fire round now. Favorite genre of film? Probably mine is sci-fi. And mine would be rom-com, much to Aaron's disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite food? Favorite food, uh, roast dinner. Um, even though we're vegetarians, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So no, no meat, but just like <laughs> yeah. roast potatoes, um, Yorkshire pudding, that sort of thing. And mine would probably be like Chinese, I'd say. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Dream car. Uh, Aston Martin. Yeah, we're Bond. Aston Martin. It's got to be Aston Martin. <laughs> Aston Martin all the way. Yeah. <laughs> Any of them. <laughs> Favourite concert you've been to? Uh, Guns and Roses. Guns and Roses, for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, two final questions. What are your plans for 2021? Yeah, I mean, we do have some plans in the pipeline, but uh, again, we can't plan too far ahead because mm. nobody really knows what's going to happen. So we're just crossing our fingers and hoping that we're able to go out and gig. And just yeah. kind of enjoying, yeah, yeah, just trying not to focus on what we can't do and try and do to do what we can. What we can you know? do, yeah, for and, sure. And um, just, I mean, continue to build like our community online, which is just so much fun. And we've yeah. got to know so many people and there's so much talk of like, reunions of people <laughs> yeah. so just looking forward to all that it's, and just growing more and then and then it's gonna be absolutely bonkers when we're allowed to go out and yeah. <laughs> you know, the, whole, yeah, the, whole, the whole country opens up that'd be yeah. great yeah anything else you wish to mention the album releases on the 20th of november and we're like stoked about that aren't we uh, yeah i was so excited by it and if anyone is listening who's been supporting us as well just thank you because it's yeah. been but all of us, it's yeah. been a rough time and we've had so much support yeah. through this whole lockdown it's been period. been amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, and hope that you like the album. Yeah, yeah, totally. When Rivers Meet, debut album, We Fly Free, will be released on Friday, 20th of November 2020. And I'd like to thank Grace and Aaron for coming on Rock Chat with Trace. Our oh, pleasure. Thank you thank so you much. much. Thank you for having me. Rock Chat with Trace.